Aeroflot Flight 1492 was a scheduled domestic passenger flight from Moscow Sheremetyevo to Murmansk, Russia, operated by Aeroflot. The Sukhoi Superjet 100 aircraft operating the flight was climbing out on May 5, 2019 when lightning struck it. The aircraft experienced an electrical failure and was forced to return to Sheremetyevo for an emergency landing. It landed hard and bounced, causing the landing gear to collapse, fuel to spill from the wings, and a fire to erupt. The fire engulfed the plane's tail, killing 41 of the 78 people on board. What happened? And why did they have to crash land? Watch the complete video to find out. The plane was a Russian-made Sukhoi Superjet 100 MSN 95135, registered as Romeo Alpha 89098. It was delivered new to Aeroflot on September 27, 2017, and had 2,700 flight hours and 1,600 cycles before the crash. Aeroflot Superjets have 87 passenger seats, with 12 in business and 75 in the economy. Flight 1492 took off from Sheremetyevo International Airport's runway 24C at 1803 local time, bound for Murmansk Airport. Towering thunderstorm clouds with a base elevation of 6,000 feet and a peak elevation of approximately 29,000 feet were observed near the airport. The clouds were moving northeastward at a speed of 40 to 45 kilometers an hour. When the plane approached the thunderstorm zone at 1807 local time, a 327 degree heading was manually selected, initiating a right turn earlier than the N24E standard instrument departure. However, the crew did not request active thunderstorm area avoidance clearance. The aircraft was climbing through flight level 89 when it was struck by lightning at 1508 UTC. ATC directed the aircraft to Sheremetyevo after it reached flight level 106. It flew in a right orbit before landing on runway 24 left. The crew used the instrument landing system and the captain flew the approach manually. After capturing the glide slope, the aircraft weighed 43 and a half tons, 1.6 tons more than the maximum landing weight. The captain attempted to contact the controller at 1518.53 UTC to request a holding area, but the controller's recorder did not record his message. In direct mode, the flaps were set to 25 degrees, the recommended setting for an overweight landing. At the speed of 158 knots, the aircraft made simultaneous ground contact with all three landing gear legs 900 meters beyond the runway threshold, resulting in a vertical acceleration of 2.5 5G. Concurrent with the touchdown, the side stick was moved from full aft to full forward in 0.4 seconds. Even though the spoilers were armed, automatic spoiler deployment was disabled in direct mode and they were not manually extended. The plane jumped to a height of 6 feet. The captain attempted maximum reverse thrust while keeping the side stick fully forward. In the absence of weight on the aircraft's wheels, reverse thrust and reverser door deployment are inhibited, and the reverser doors only begin to open after the second touchdown. The aircraft took off before the reverse door cycle was completed and the reverse thrust did not engage. The second touchdown came two seconds later, nose first, at 155 knots and with a vertical load of 5.85 G. The main landing gear weak link sheared under heavy load, allowing the gear legs to move up and backwards while the wing remained intact. The plane jumped to a height of 15 to 18 feet. Thrust was not allowed to increase until the reverser doors were closed, and a third impact was recorded at 140 knots and a vertical load of more than 5G. The landing gear collapsed, piercing the wing, and fuel leaked from the wing tanks. The wing's rear fuselage and empennage were all engulfed in flames. Fire alarms for the aft cargo hold and the auxiliary power unit sounded in the cockpit. At 1530 UTC, the aircraft slid down the runway, veered to the left, and stopped on the grass between two runway-adjacent taxiways, with the nose facing upwind. At 1531 UTC, the engines were turned off. The front passenger doors were used for evacuation and their slides were deployed. The first officer climbed out of the right cockpit window using the escape rope. Aeroflot claimed the evacuation took 55 seconds, but video evidence shows the slides were still used 70 seconds later. Hand luggage was seen being carried out of the aircraft by passengers. The fire, which was extinguished about 45 minutes after landing, destroyed the rear half of the aircraft. The plane had five crew members and 73 passengers on board. The captain, a first officer, and three cabin crew members made up the crew. Denis Yevdokimov, 42, held an airline transport license and had 6,800 flying hours, 1,500 of which were on the Superjet. He had previously flown the Ilyushin IL-76, 
several smaller aircraft for the FSB, and the Boeing 737 for Transaero. He worked for Aeroflot and transitioned to the SSJ-100 in 2016. Maxim Kuznetsov, 36, joined Aeroflot in 2017 with a commercial pilot license and 773 hours of flying experience, including 623 on the Superjet. The Interstate Aviation Committee investigated the accident. The French BEA participated as a representative of the aircraft engine's current design state, and EASA provided technical advice to BEA. Both flight recorders were located and recovered. The cockpit voice recorder was found to be in good working order, but the flight data recorder had been damaged by exposure to extremely high temperatures, necessitating data recovery by IAC specialists. Data reading was completed on May 17, 2019, allowing analysis to begin. Rosa Vyatsia, Russia's Civil Aviation Authority, received a follow-up accident report from the IAC. The IAC released their interim report on June 14, 2019, presenting a detailed reconstruction of the accident, but they did not draw any conclusions. The pilots did not request air traffic control to provide active storm avoidance. They did, however, enter the second segment of the departure earlier than planned, initiating a right turn away from the storm. During an orbiting maneuver in a 40-degree bank, the pilot flying had difficulty maintaining altitude in manual flight and deviated by more than 200 feet from his assigned altitude, resulting in multiple oral alerts. The crew needed to complete the approach briefing and checklist, and they did not set the go-around altitude. The report also stated that the pilots ignored a wind shear warning, which would have necessitated a go-around unless it was a false alarm. Investigators discovered lightning strikes on antenna, various sensors, exit lights, and cockpit windows. Investigators re-examined the landing gear design and determined that it met certification requirements. The report cited Sukhoi's material claiming that current certification requirements did not consider the effect of secondary impacts of the airframe on the ground after the destruction of the landing gear. The interim report did not investigate the accident's survival factors, citing that they were still being analyzed and would be included in the final report. A criminal investigation into a fatal violation of the rules of safe movement and exploitation of air transport had been launched. On May 6, the investigative committee stated that insufficient skill of the pilots, dispatchers, and those performing the technical inspection of the plane, as well as mechanical problems and poor weather, were possible causes of the accident. According to a high-ranking law enforcement source, experts will investigate the actions of Sheremetyevo's Fire and Rescue Service. According to the source, air traffic control was late in raising the alarm, and fire engines had yet to leave the fire station when the accident occurred. Only two of the six available engines were used within the first six minutes. There was widespread speculation that the evacuation was delayed due to passengers retrieving hand luggage, which was prompted by video footage of passengers exiting the plane with luggage in hand. According to TASS, citing a law enforcement source, most passengers at the tail end of the plane had little chance of being rescued. Many did not even have time to unfasten their seatbelts. He also stated that passengers from the plane's tail section who could escape had moved to the front of the plane before it stopped, and that he had no confirmation that luggage retrieval had slowed the evacuation. One anonymous witness rejected the theory that the observed luggage retrieval caused the evacuation delay. Following the release of the accident summary by Rosa Viazia on May 17th, it was reported in the media that the pilots had failed to set some of the wing surfaces, variously referred to as flaps, brakes, and air brakes, in news reports for landing. On the same day, Aeroflot issued a statement denying the pilots had violated company procedure. Aeroflot stated that the flaps were adequately configured for landing and that the spoilers should be manually extended only when reverse thrust is applied and the aircraft has settled on the runway. The airline stated that preliminary information provided by Rosa Vietzia is not evidence of pilot error and chastised the media for jumping to conclusions. In a letter to Minister of Transport Yevgeny Dietrich on May 24, 2019, the Russian Association of Air Transport Operators requested a review of the SSJ-100 for compliance with certification requirements. The AEVT questioned whether the lightning strike should have disrupted the electrical supply and whether impact forces should have compromised the fuel system. According to the letter, the flight control system, engines, cabin fire protection, and crew training program should all be reviewed for compliance. Thank you for stopping by to watch. Please subscribe to the channel and post your video recommendations in the comments area if you want us to do more films like this.